In this video I'll be using old worn out high speed steel drill bits in an attempt to hard face a garden tool to improve its cutting edge. After resharpening we'll see if the high speed steel retains its hardness during several tests and ultimately answer if this is a practical option for hard facing tools. You know, it pretty much doesn't matter what industry you're in, dull tools are never a good thing. They always require more energy to do the same amount of work, and often the final product isn't as good. And that's a problem I'm experiencing with this garden hoe I have here. You see, it keeps losing its edge, and I'm regularly having to resharpen it. Now sure, I could throw this out and go buy a higher quality garden hoe. However, in the spirit of upcycling and experimentation, I wanted to find out if I could add a tool steel to the leading edge of this garden hoe and keep it around for longer. Besides turning dull after only a short amount of use, the leading edge also rounds over when digging in hard packed soil. Definitely not ideal. The underlying problem is the steel lacks sufficient hardness to hold an edge. A crude way of testing a metal's hardness is to take a file and make a couple of passes using the file. If the metal is soft, the file will dig into the metal making it more difficult to push. Obviously this piece of metal is very soft. Repeating the test on my hammer, I can feel the file skates across the top of the hammer with little resistance, meaning it's quite hard. Using this crude method, I'd say the metal is quite soft as the file digs into the metal which explains why I'm constantly having to resharpen it. So how am I going to fix this? Well I could go and buy some specialised hard facing filler rods. However I have an old set of high speed steel drill bits that have long past expired. So why don't I use these drill bits as a hard facing filler rod? For welding I'll be using my Hugong Wave 200D TIG welder. If you'd like to know more about it there's a link down in the video's description. I'll set the welder to DC mode and program the peak current at 200 amps. Before I can weld though, first I have to remove the paint from the areas I'll be welding. The drill bits were given a quick clean in acetone to try and remove any contaminants that would affect the quality of the weld. Have you ever found yourself situated in a paddock full of cows and need to order circuit boards? Yeah, me neither. But if I did, I would use this video's sponsor, JLC PCB. Five circuit boards cost as little as $2. They offer fast production time and with a multitude of design options, you're only limited by your imagination. Ordering is as simple as going to jlcpcb.com, uploading your Gerber files and choosing your design preferences. You can also choose any colour solder mask at no additional cost. And if you're new to designing circuit boards, then check out my KiCad circuit board series to get you started. Look, look Daisy, free circuit boards. I decided to weld the smaller side of the garden hoe first, before attempting this on a larger scale. Overall the drill bit acted very similar to a standard filler rod, and was surprisingly easy to work with. And the weld doesn't look too bad either. So I decided to do a second pass to build up the thickness. Doing the old file test again, the high speed steel retained its hardness post welding and was as hard as a coffin nail. The 
Next, I used a grinder to reshape the edge, regularly dunking the tool in water to avoid overheating the metal. This took quite some time as the metal hard facing was laughing at the grinder. Eventually I finished up with the grinder. You can see a few voids in the weld, however I suspect this was probably caused by either oil or paint contamination. So next time I'll do a better job of my prep work. I moved on to using an oil stone to further refine the edge. However, the hard facing was making it quite difficult to sharpen, so I gave up and used a bench grinder to finish it off. So now I have some practice under my belt, I moved on to hard facing the other side. To be completely honest, grinding this was a complete pain. It took me around 30 minutes of non-stop grinding and dunking to reshape the edge. But I suppose that does prove how hard this metal really is. Taking a closer look at the edge, there are a few small voids but nothing major. Perhaps this method requires surgical cleanliness, or perhaps the cheap base metal is causing some issue during welding. All right, so same location, different day. Got a nice snazzy paint job on my garden hoe. It's not gonna look new for long though. Let's test it out. Whew, one down, a few more to go. So let's take a look at the soil that I'm digging through. Uh, in the small part of the world I live in here in New Zealand, we have quite a rich history with volcanic activity going back. And that's left some interesting scars on the landscape. So down here, we've got quite sandy loose soil. And then up above in this layer, we've got pumice. And it's really, really loaded almost all pumice on this layer. Now pumice is quite abrasive. Um, if you smash it with a hammer it's pretty easy to turn into a powder. So it's not impact resistant but it is very abrasive which is what makes this soil really hard on tools because you're basically like for one of a better explanation digging through sandpaper or an abrasive which is what makes this such a good test for the face hardening I've done. So, let's get digging. So in the middle of our driveway, we've got this root from a blue gum tree that's growing and it's kind of in the way. 
a garden hoe is certainly not meant for this job, but let's see if it'll cut through a root. Oh, we got one end. Let's see if we can get the other. Oh wow, one hit. Oh, there's more of it down there. I would say for a garden hoe that's really not designed for this kind of work, that is impressive. And I certainly wouldn't have been able to do that in its previous state. Woohoo! This is kind of scary, it's bouncing towards the camera. I'm going to position it a bit further away so that I don't clop my camera. That would be very bad. Look at that, not bad. Oh, there's still one more bit. Look at that. Cut right through a blue gum root. Pretty good. So, conclusion time. Is face hardening your tools and equipment with old used drill bits a viable option? Well, surprisingly, the answer is yes. Um, after the digging I've done, and frankly abuse as well, because I've done silly things that you wouldn't normally do with a tool like this, such as cut roots and even chop some wood, um, I can't feel any rollover on the edge with my thumb, um, and there isn't any more damage to the leading edge, at least that I can see, um, that wasn't already there to begin with. Remember, the edge wasn't perfect to begin with. It had a couple of voids and things like that. So all in all, this is a viable option for face hardening your tools. So if you found the video useful, please smash that like button. Helps me get found in the almighty YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. And I'm going to leave you with this amazing view of my backyard. See you next time.